back with a new topic. So today I want to talk about what um, loss has taught me. So when I say loss, um, I mean it in a couple of different ways. So over the past decade, um, for those of you who may not know my story, <laughs> um, the past decade really has been quite an eye-opener for me in a lot of ways. Um, I lost five people to death in a very short period of time, uh, and I had two very significant people at the time um, walk out of my life. So, well, one was removed and the other walked out. <laughs> so, that said, um, what loss has taught me is several things. So, first off, um, my story started in this instance with death, and um, it started with the death of one of my very close friends, who was also a family friend, um, and it came very suddenly and very out of the blue that he got sick. Um, all of the deaths that I had been through actually were really spontaneous. They were all out of the blue that, um, the different people that it happened to got sick or, um, and had died, not or. So, starting out, um, first off I wanted to say that when you're dealing with loss in terms of death, um, grief is a very specific and um, personal thing, I think. If the... It's kind of hard to explain in a way. So if the scenario is could be the same for each person like you could go through a death i could go through a death right but the process that you go through and the process that i go through to get through it and to deal with it is completely different and can look completely different um and that's what i have one of the things that i have taken from this that while my family has gone through all of this as well, um, it looks different for all of us. And so when it comes to grief and when it comes to just the grieving process in general, you can't really go with what others want for you, I think. And that's for me in the beginning something that I felt that I did. Um, when it came to getting counseling, when it came to going to counseling. Um, I wasn't really doing it for myself, I was doing it for other people. And in hindsight, I think in a way it was good for me to go because I had another person to talk to that was sort of a third party that didn't know my family, didn't know me you know, it was just sort of neutral, um, and I could say whatever. I didn't have to be or feel like I needed to be filtered in any way, but in the same token, it's someone who doesn't know me and doesn't know my family and doesn't know what we're going through or my history or anything like that. So it was sort of awkward in a sense because I didn't really know where to start, and I didn't really know in the beginning what to say. Um, so yeah, the counseling thing was a little bit weird for me. Um, and to be honest with you, it was nice to have a third party to talk to that wasn't involved, but for me, through this whole process, I think where I've learned the most is just following my own instincts, following my own gut in terms of how do I move forward in this. And um, 
So I think that's a, a really important takeaway that, you know, it's really important to, if you need to go to counseling, of course, there's nothing wrong with that. But to be doing it, I think, for the right reasons, not doing it for other people, for example, um, or doing it for the sake of others and the sake of, you know, other people seeing you in that moment, like, okay, she's going to be fine because she's going to counseling. Um, it's not about anybody else when you're going through a grieving process. It's, it's about you and what you need. And I've really come to terms with the concept that I'm really the only one that knows what I need. And at the end of the day, you know, when it comes to grief, when it comes to anything in life, the decision ends with me and I need to be okay with what I decide. It's not about anybody else and if anybody else is okay with it or not. Um, so that's something that I've really had to overcome because I'm very much a people pleaser and um, that is something that I've really struggled with throughout my whole life. Um, so, yeah, that was a huge takeaway for me. Um, trusting my gut and trusting my instinct is also something that, funny enough, is foreign <laughs> to me. I've, um, like I said, I've been very much someone who has gone with other people's two cents or, you know, pleasing other people, that kind of thing, because for different reasons, and, um, I've just learned that over the years, whether it be with death or any other circumstance, um, going with other people's instinct or what other people want for me has kind of been to my detriment in a lot of ways, um, and not really been true to myself and being true to myself in terms of the grieving process is a huge thing as well um you know you have to do what's right for you in any sense not just grieving but in any sense you have to do what's right for you and um you know it's that's just really important in life in general i think so I've also realized that taking the moment to pause has been a huge thing for me too. I think kind of as a society, not just, you know, when it comes to grieving or that sort of thing, just as a society, we're always like go, go, go and moving on to the next. But it's super um, important and I think you get a lot out of pausing. You get a lot out of just being in the moment and present and stopping, you know, not moving forward to the next and not continuously moving. Um, and also that's something that I've struggled with too. It's not easy to just be. <laughs> um, you know, and when you're going through something, it's difficult because the focus is kind of, what I felt was the focus was sort of on me in the, in the sense that when I went to counseling, for example, it was about me and what I was going through and I'm not used to talking about myself or having this sort of spotlight, if you will, on me. Um, I'm very much about what I can do for other people and, um, you know, being there for other people and not having it be about me. So that was difficult and it's it was difficult to realize that that's also not being selfish. It's also not being, um, you know, conceited or arrogant in any way. There's a big difference in terms of having it all about me or
taking care of yourself and really respecting yourself and respecting your time, um, respecting what you need and listening to what you need. There's nothing wrong with that. And I had a really hard time with that because that's also something that as a family, you know, with my extended family, my, my immediate family, it's not really, it wasn't really taught for us. Um, so, yeah, the whole idea of, you know, doing something for you was just really foreign to me as well. Um, and also patience, I think, patience with yourself, patience with your process and patience with those around you. So like I said, patience with yourself, meaning that there's no, I love the saying and the idea that there's no there. You're always there. You're always where you're meant to be in any um, circumstance, in any particular time. And so for me, looking back, I was always looking at the how am I going to get out of this question, you know, how am I going to move forward? And I didn't realize that in just being in it is okay. And being upset and, and feeling what I was feeling was okay. And in those moments, that's what I needed to do. And it's okay to do that. You know, it's okay to be sad and it's okay to be upset. Um, but the difference is, I think, to not stay in that space. If you stay in that space for too long, then that's where it becomes, you know, an issue of dealing with depression and all those sorts of things. Um, but it's okay to feel what you feel. And... For me, it was really uncomfortable to go there and to feel the things that I was feeling. Um, and in a lot of ways, in those particular situations I was going through, I didn't. Um, I was kind of closed off in a lot of ways because I didn't want to feel what I was feeling. Um, I let myself be upset, of course, but in terms of you know, when I felt like I was missing people, for example, or I was having memories of people, I would sort of tend to block it out um, because I just didn't want to go there in the moment. So, and I mean, it's painful, right? When you are dealing with, <laughs> when you're dealing with a loss, when you're dealing with someone who's left your life for whatever reason, um, it's painful and it hurts and it's not necessarily something that you want to feel or you want to deal with, but there was a knowing for me that on some level I always knew I was going to get out of it, it was just a matter of how, I think. Um, and allowing myself to just be and allowing myself to go through it however I needed to go through it was a huge deal. Not having outside influence or not having outside, you know, two cents from people um, ended up being a big deal for me because, like I said, it was more, I learned more and I think I got more out of doing it my own way instead of doing it someone else's instead of you know taking the route of going to counseling i'm grateful that i did because it allowed me the opportunity to talk to someone else but i think in the things that i've done for myself over the years um i've just gotten a lot more out of that as opposed to you know, putting my issues in someone else's hands, if that makes sense. Um, and I mean, that's all a part of listening to 
your gut, listening to your instinct and trusting in the fact that, you know, you will get there. It's just a matter of how. And I think once I kind of let go of the grief and let go of the loss and let go of all the feelings that I had kind of wrapped up in that, once I decided to do that, I think it really opened the door to, um, to being able to move forward and to really being able to start seeing, okay, we've been through this, we've been through a lot, but now what about me, right? And now what do I want and what do I need? And going through those things really allowed me to see that I wasn't putting myself on the list. I wasn't putting myself as a priority in my life. And it allowed me to look at relationships that I've had, for example, and see that basically every relationship I've had um, I've put the other person first and it really opened my eyes to the fact that number one life is super short we only get one and at the end of the day you have to do what's right for you and at the end of the day you need to know your priorities um, you need to know what you want to do with yourself. You need to know where you're headed. Um, or even just having a sense of that, I think. And making time for yourself is a huge thing. Um, and knowing that that isn't selfish either. Um, and boundaries. Boundaries are a huge thing that I've realized I never really have had with people. And for me, it was always like an all or nothing situation, which has come back to bite me in the ass more times than I care to count. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, and fortunately, I think it took these scenarios for me to go through to really see that I was taking myself and my life kind of for granted in a sense. Um, and I was allowing other people to take me for granted. And so those things needed to change. Um, and I mean, I think with this health issue I've been having too, it's sort of the catalyst that has gotten me to moving towards my next level. I've spent so much time being consumed with the loss and the grief and the, the, you know, just sadness and misery of it all <laughs> that, um, I wasn't allowing myself to move to the next level. And, I mean, I'd also kind of, in a sense, convinced myself that if I moved out of that grief and out of that pain, it meant in some way that I was forgetting about the people that I lost. And that's, like, so far from the truth. Um, and for me, that was really my ego just trying to keep me safe and keep me from moving forward, keep me from, you know, moving to the next level. And at the end of the day, it didn't help at all. It didn't keep me safe at all. It kept me miserable. And so once I let go and once I, um, once I really just trusted that I could let go and still have my moments of missing these people, have my moments of thinking about them, but not be stuck in it and not be so bogged down by, you know, guilt and sadness and all of that stuff 
that it really made the difference in terms of, yes, I can have those moments still, but not be stuck in it and not be trapped and not not let myself move forward and not not let myself be okay um and not give myself the permission to live the way that i want to live because i mean let's face it at the end of the day those that i've lost wouldn't want me to be in the position that i was right those that i've lost wouldn't want me to be sad and wouldn't want me to continue being in grief and wouldn't want me to continue hurting um and that's not a way to honor myself either it's not a way to love myself and so yeah now i'm just kind of in a space where i'm doing what's best for me and i'm figuring it out as i go and that's the other thing too that you know it doesn't have to be all figured out. It doesn't have to be all planned in a perfect little box and whatever. Because life isn't that way, you know, in general. Life's not that way. Um, whether you're going through grief or a certain situation or not. Um, so figuring it out as you go and being okay with that is a huge thing as well. Because... To be honest, what I've learned throughout my life is really the destination is the journey, as they say, right? It's not where you end up. It's mostly and more, most importantly about how you get there, um, how you move towards those things. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my two cents on how I've moved out of loss and grief and sadness. Um, and I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm a work in progress and I definitely still have my days, but I've really just learned that it's not healthy to stay in those feelings. It's not healthy to live there. Um, and at the end of the day, if I think about it, those that I've lost wouldn't want that for me either. So it's a way, in a sense, to honor myself, but also honor those that I've lost too. You know, it's sort of a twofer. <laughs> um, so I hope that this has helped you guys. If you, any of you are dealing with grief or have dealt with grief before, it's maybe just sort of um, a different insight to you know, add to how you dealt with yours. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please do send them my way. And uh, happy Sunday, and I'll see you in the next one.